All right, welcome back. So right now what I want to do is I want to finish off the material uh, that was uh, gone through <clears throat> with the uh, third lecture of the second week. We'll go through the absorption and emission spectra. What is that? Spectra is just plural for spectrum for uh, who of you who are joining the uh, English language terminology. The energy content of molecules. These three little guys over here are in also a minimal requirement question. So absorption and emission spectra. Let's, uh, let's start with that. And uh, what's important to understand is that all material is able to absorb electromagnetic radiation to a given extent. And what we're going to do is let's take, uh, let's take hydrogen 1, right? And it only has one electron. And I'm going to draw it like so. This is a nucleus. And this is the, this one electron that it has. You can think of it as having one level. And this is the one level of energy that this hydrogen nucleus can release, really. If we're talking about very complex atoms, we may have multiple orbitals, multiple energy levels that could take place, different energy levels. But when we're talking about hydrogen, we can see the most simple absorption and emission spectrum, and that's what what is covered here, and this is from the lecture slide. And what we can see is that uh, the absorption spectrum here for hydrogen is very limited. What's very important to understand is the relationship between the absorption spectrum and the emission spectrum. And you can see that whatever color it does not emit, it will absorb. And this is called, and this is also in biostatistics, complementary. In biostatistics, it uh, represents complementary events, so absorption and emission spectrum are complementary to one another. They complete one another, you can say. So this is this uh, this specific. This is not obviously this is not a hydrogen, but let's just assume it is. It can absorb all the energy that it does not emit, all the ranges of wavelengths that it does not emit, and emit that specific wavelength. And this is basically absorption. Uh, they didn't go through uh, the real inner workings of absorption, but what we did find is this formula here. Where is this formula? This, uh, this formula here, the Beer-Lambert law, and this little depiction here that a lot of uh, students asked me about. So I just put it right here, and I'm just going to explain to you what this means. This is a biological sample. It contains uh, matter of whatever part, and we said that all matter can absorb light to, uh, to an extent. <clears throat> so we have light coming in, I0, just like the x-ray presentation, this is my uh, in, uh, intensity coming in. Some of the intensity is being absorbed by the material, some of the electromagnetic radiation is being absorbed, and we're going to observe potentially less energy coming out. And this, uh, this equation here is the Beer-Lambert law. And it's also in the minimal. This is the Beard-Lambert law. And it, all, all it does is really explain to us how we can solve for the intensity that we would have on the other, outer side with the uh, absorption properties and uh, the, this initial intensity, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to really go through interpreting the Beard-Lambert law for two reasons. First of all, I haven't seen it represented in, uh, in an exam at all. And secondly, I do believe that it's more important to have the intuition as to absorption of light by matter than to have the mathematical or physical quantitative ideas uh, taken out. So when we've understood the uh, absorption and emission, and it's really important to understand that we're talking about orbitals here, right? These are orbitals. So these are electronic transitions of electrons which uh, leads us to ask, what, what, what type of energy contents can we have in a molecule? Well, if we're talking about, and we, we've just went through this, but just to hit the point home, if I have my nucleus right here, and I have my respective orbitals, I'm going to change colors just, to, just because, I can have various electronic transitions. So you have this transition or this transition, or even this transition. And these are quantized transition between uh, between these electrons. What I can also have is the molecule can lose energy either by uh, these electronic transition by an electron relaxing 
and emitting energy. And it can also occur due to vibrations of, it, of, it, of that specific molecule. Let's say I have a molecule here, whatever molecule. It can vibrate and emit some of that energy in the form of vibration. So we have electronic, which is the most powerful transition, or rather the most powerful method of losing energy. We have the vibrational energy. And we also have, let's just say I have these same two atoms. These two atoms can rotate around this single bond. And this only applies when we have single bonds. Let's say I have two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. This guy can rotate and this guy can also rotate. Uh, we, can, we can see these two hydrogens going in every which way. This goes here and this rotate, rotate it down. So this is here now. So this is rotation around a single bond. Rotation. And we'll, we'll learn about this in uh, chemistry as well, but for physics, for biophysics, this is all we really need to know about the energy levels. Electronic is the most potent, vibration, and rotational energy. What we need to understand, unless we've already gone through this, what we need to understand is what does it do to the absorption and emission spectrum. Let's see, let's see what I mean. Implications, we're gonna write implications. And it's gonna be clear in a second. Let's say I have an element. This is its orbitals and energy levels, right? Now, if we're talking about electronic transitions, we have different energy packs that we can uh, essentially lose, so to speak. This is my electronic transitions. But I also said I can lose some energy in the form of vibration and rotation. So what would I observe? I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger here. Very good. So we have all these lines, which is our elect elect electronic interactions, form of losing uh, or emitting energy via electronic transition. And we also have the ability to vibrate and rotate. So let's just say I'm in this energy level. I can vibrate down to here, which is halfway. I can vibrate down to here a little bit. And then I can emit the energy in the form of electrical interactions. So basically, this is depicted in the presentations as thin lines, thin lines in between these energy levels. And why is it that way? I'm going to mark these energy levels these basic energy levels in orange so we can make that difference. And it's shown in the presentation that we show it to you exactly so you know what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Here, there we go. This is what I'm talking about really. And how does it come into play? Let's just say I have some energy and I'm not going to really go into the details but I have some energy at this point. I can vibrate or rotate and lose some of that energy and I can find myself at this point, and then via an electronic transition, I can lose some of that energy. And that means that instead of getting these distinct lines, I can get anywhere in between pretty much. So my emission uh, spectrum gets broader because I can release energies at a different wavelengths. That's pretty much all we really need to know about that. And this is in the minimal. Actually, let's, let's make a point of finding it. Oh, there we go. Aligning the sending order, the following transitions according to their energy differences. And the answer would be that electronic is the most potent, then vibrational, then rotational. And uh, that's pretty much it for the, what is it, we're in the third lecture? Yes, the third lecture of week two. Hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next video.